My name is Ijoma Oluo. I am the author of So You Want to Talk About Race, and I write and speak on issues of race and identity in America. Ijoma Oluo is a Seattle writer, activist, a self-described internet yeller. Her 2018 book is a guide to having frank and fearless conversations about race. Oluo is herself biracial. Her mother is white. Her father is Nigerian. Her book explores the uncomfortable talks that she has had with her own family and answers questions for people who have no idea where to start. Like, what if I talk about race wrong? Well, since George Floyd's killing, So You Want to Talk About Race has soared to the top of the New York Times bestseller list. In an interview you will see only here on Facing Race, our Kristen Ayers sat down with Oluo to talk about why she believes this moment is unlike any other in history and what she hopes will happen next. What has changed for you since the killing of George Floyd? Right now there is an unprecedented level of interest in my work and the work of many other people who are writing on issues of race and racism in America. Also, nothing's changed at the same time. You know, there's a lot of interest, but I'm still a black woman trying to do this work. A lot of the conversations we're having are the same. I'm still trying to navigate myself as, you know, a black woman traumatized by what's been happening, um, trying to protect my family, trying to explain to my children, you know, that's all stayed the same. It's just the conversation's a lot bigger. Right now, we kind of have a unique opportunity to advance the conversation in ways that might have been hard before. It seems like there's just this thirst for information on this subject right now that we may never have seen before. Is that accurate? Absolutely not in my lifetime have I seen this intense of a focus from primarily white people especially, on what is happening in this moment and what can be done. A lot of people have been calling it a national reckoning on race. Is, is it that? Whether we'll be able to call this a true reckoning depends on how we're willing to look at it and whether or not we're willing to face the reality of the situation when it comes to race and ethnicity in this country and what we're willing to do about it. It will only be a reckoning if we decide to make it so, if we decide to make real change. What really does need to happen in order for this to become a true turning point? First, we really need to look at how black, indigenous, and other people of color are impacted by racism day-to-day -day life. It is not just someone said something mean to me, someone said the N-word. It's not even just someone said they weren't going to hire me because of my race. It is how are our children being treated in schools? What sort of expectations can we have for safety in our neighborhoods, right? It is how are we represented in our government? And we need to look at that and say, how do we interact with these systems? And that's where we're seeing some, some real positive opportunities for change. Looking at schools and saying, okay, well, if our children are being targeted by school resource officers, Let's get them out of our schools, right? That's a systemic change. Instead of saying, we're gonna wait until one officer does something, say, you know what, the data's here. We know what's happening. We know how we're being impacted. We're gonna change the system. And we need to be doing this in our city councils. We need to be doing this in our workplaces, in our towns, our communities, our schools. We need to look and say, what are we supporting? Where are we spending our money? What are we prioritizing with our local government? What are we prioritizing in our work culture? What can we do to actually remove the barriers to wealth, health, you know, and safety for people of color in this country. Are we on the right track? Yes, I think we are in certain places. I think what we have right now is a collection of opportunities across the country that we need to really take advantage of and push forward. But yes, I think that I and many other people doing this work did not think that we would be talking about defunding the police because last year, the year before, the year before, the year before, we were trying to talk about fundamental change and instead spent most of our time trying to convince people that racism existed at all or that police brutality was even really a problem that we've been able to push past that is progress. It's shameful progress 400 years into this system, but it's also progress I wasn't expecting this year, right? I don't think we're going to wake up next year and see an entire country changed, but I do think we have the opportunity to see real, important, fundamental, systemic change in pockets all over this country, including here in Seattle. And what we can do to support that, to keep that movement going, to continuously keep the conversation going, 
in ways that don't just look like massive protest is what really matters. What we do to hold our leaders accountable to the promises they've made these last few months really matters. What do you say to some of the critics who have said that the idea that if white people are not actively fighting racism, that they are participating in racism. There are those who say that's too extreme an argument. Whether you think it's extreme or pessimistic, it will keep happening, whether you believe in it or not. And you will keep contributing to it, whether you believe in it or not. I instead want people to understand that if you are invested in anti-racism, that this is actually a really empowering concept to understand. Because instead of it being, I have to go find the people who hate people of color and spend all of my time convincing them that people of color are human beings and then I will have made progress. Instead, you can say, wait a minute, how am I participating in systems of racism? What can I do differently in my work life, my spending life, my voting life, right? My social life to make a real difference? That's empowering but you have to kind of sit with those hard truths. And if you are willing to do that, you can make real change. But if you're not, the reality of how you interact with these systems doesn't go away. You're just trying to ignore it. And I think that oftentimes that's where people get upset because they didn't want to know. They wanted to continue going about their life and think if I never said the N word in my life, I wasn't racist and I didn't hurt anybody. But you're participating in systems that hurt people. And these systems rely on your ignorance. And when the tools are made available for you to do better, and you find out about that, you have no excuse not to. Is it natural that we see a fall off here? Or are you optimistic that there can be lasting change? I think it's a bit of both. Of course, we're going to see some fall off. And I think part of that is because we haven't figured out in this current generation how to sustain long-term resistance, and we need to.